And if you're not acknowledging the feelings, do you really think you're in touch with the thoughts that are underneath those feelings? And if you're not acknowledging the feelings, do you really think you're in touch with the beliefs that are underneath those thoughts and those feelings? You know, that's where divine metaphysics, you know, says like, uh, like the monkey and the Lion King, Rafiki, look again, you know, when Simba looks down into the pond and says, there's nothing there. Look again, you know. It, the Spirit's like saying, look again, look deeper, go deeper with it. There could be a lot of screaming and shouting, which is okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right, because then it's becoming more and more authentic at getting in touch with what's going on in awareness, what's, getting, what's going on underneath there, and that's what you want. I, I know in working with messengers over the years, you know, that it's like, okay, let it up, let it up, and it can just swirl like a giant hurricane or like a giant tornado. And it's just that, that I, the one thing I love about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is so practical. Instead of just having everyone just sit around all day long <laughs> and expose that the Spirit will come in. I'm sure Jesus did this with the Apostles. They probably were given Jesus an earful about, do you know see what John did and, and Peter and you know this and this. But, but the thing about it is he's not going to intercede. He's not going to, you can't solve the problem at the level of the problem. There's the exposing is absolutely essential. But the exposing isn't actually what forgiveness is about. It's, it's essential. It's an essential initial aspect of raising the darkness to the light. But it's not actually what forgiveness is. Forgiveness overlooks the error. Forgiveness sees that what your brother did has not occurred. That takes a lot of, that takes a flip from wrong-mindedness to right-mindedness, where you perceive the whole world anew, where you take nothing personal, where you see attack as impossible, you know, that's a huge transformation of consciousness. And that's what this mind training is about. Training your mind to, to have that turnabout. And so, oftentimes, you know, where there's a lots of exposing, 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 you know, you can expose till the cows come home, and the cows never seem to come home. And it's, it's a heck of a relationship. Just exposing, exposing, exposing. It's like a Mary Tyler Moore line in one of those movies. Are we having fun yet? She says. Are we having fun yet with, with all this exposing? Now, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and even that's why there's even times for exposing and, and times to be about your task or your business, you know, to, to follow the Spirit and go forward with what you're doing. If, if we just sat around here like this, this could be like an encounter group from the 1960s, and we just exposed and exposed and exposed and exposed, it, it could get into almost like a frenzy. But actually, there's the ebb and flow of, of coming back, oh yeah, uh, back to purpose, back to focus back to being used by the Holy Spirit, back to letting the Holy Spirit work through you. That's coming at it from another angle than the exposing. You're giving yourself over to guidance to be used for the whole, for the good of the whole. And that also works together. It's almost like you're kneading the bread, you know. It's two, there's two hands there helping out. So that's our approach. No people pleasing, no private thoughts is, is the permission to expose. Don't just stuff it down, let it come up. And also, we practice following guidance, being used for mind training, attentiveness training with our projects and everything, letting the Spirit, you know, work through you. And that's been a big aspect. Those two things have been big in my life. Lots and lots of exposure and lots and lots of being used in function. In the Course, it says that the Holy Spirit has only one use for the body, is to let the voice for God speak through it. It's solely as a communication device. Well, that takes practice, you know. I didn't always use this body just solely as a means of communication. I used it for baseball, football, basketball, all kinds of competitive sports. Yes, I had a 
sprained ankle that was in a cast for like six weeks or eight weeks or something like that. And even at the time when it happened, I could see that it was the ego's misuse of the body that actually kept the guilt held in place and actually make it seem as if something happened to the body. That's the trick of this world, coming down on it and twisting the ankle. But, but I was aware of, the, of a misuse of the body. So you might say, the Holy Spirit wants you to let go of all attempts to use the body lovelessly and use it for a single purpose. And then, you know, he says it will be healthy. Not that the body really has health in and of itself, but it will appear that way in your perception, in your awareness of your dream. When your purpose for it, it becomes aligned. You go from the 60% to the 70%, the 75, 80, 85, in terms of giving it over to God. And as you approach that 100%, you approach more consistent happiness, more consistent peace, less awareness of attack thoughts. You know, it's, it's really not a more or less thing. We, we use that metaphor, and it's a very helpful metaphor, but it's, it, in the end, it's all or nothing. It's not one of those things, are you, oh, I'm partially pregnant. 75% pregnant. <laughs> We all laugh at that, but it's like with the mind training, it ultimately comes down to that as well. You know, going for purity. Miracles are natural, but purification, they're everyone's right, but purification is necessary first, and that's, that's what we're doing.